I, I personally believe it was rigged. The election was rigged. But do you think he will run again in 27? I think he will run again. Should he? I don't think so. so Baba but is an institution without systems. Yeah. And I'll tell you this on this show, yeah. while it's still hot, the bipartisan talks are dead in the water. Did you listen to the hot breakfast this morning? Here's what you missed. Say to welcome to Hot 96. Thank you, Jeff. Karibu sana, bro. Asantani. Hey, so, that you were right in the middle of the mix, right? You were right in there. Right there. So how do you lose? Well, it's all in the book. Um, you know, in, in real sense, I would say we didn't lose. What we were not declared the winners. What do you mean you didn't lose? You lost. I mean, if we lost, Jeff, the story would be very simple. I mean, people lose on the ballot. Mm. I wouldn't have to write a book. Yeah? Mm. But there are so many factors about that, you know, quote-unquote loss. It was, it was not a loss, you know, of the election. It was, it was a different kind of loss. And that's why I call it a tragic comedy. Hmm. I like the way you, you use your words. Tragic <laughs> comedy. <laughs> <laughs> but this, uh, uh, go on. Mm. I'm a, you're the whistleblower that <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 a big <laughs> exposition that's going to come out. <laughs> Say to all the stories. Yeah. <laughs> Say to yeah, maybe you are the whistleblower. <laughs> no, I'm not the whistleblower. Is there a whistleblower? Of course there is a whistleblower. What, what, what does he have that didn't come out of the Supreme Court? Well, so, I mean, that is part of the tragic comedy because um, all these things should have come out earlier, you know, sooner rather than later. But um, the, the whistleblower has come out, and truth is truth, regardless of the timing, you know, I would say. Mm. And, and what does he have? I mean, it's already in the public domain. It's been published. It shows a different set of results than the ones that IBC declared. So, yeah. But, you, you know, you took this all the way to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court replied by saying, all oh, this is hot air. Those are the I, words used, hot air. Yeah, and that was very unfortunate for the Supreme Court to do. Because the Supreme Court is a very, you know, respectable institution. I have called, I have dedicated a chapter, chapter six of my book. It's titled, you know, A Mockery of Justice. Mm -hmm. And it talks about how unfortunate it was for the, Supre uh, you know, for the Supreme Court to get into, you know, an exchange with the litigants, with its clients, you know, insulting um, litigants and clients and insulting their case. In, you know, instead of, instead of looking at the facts, looking at the, the issues, they went on a vitriol, which is very unfortunate. But tell me something, uh, Saito, about you guys, um, or rather inside the Azimio camp, mm. you, you, there's a chapter you call the Tower of Babel. Oh, Babel, yes. Right? Yes. Where people, you know, <laughs> obviously speaking different languages. Yes. Huh? Absolutely. And you assumed this win was guaranteed. People in there assumed they had won. Maybe that was part of the uh, tragic comedy. comedy. There were so many as assumptions and presumptions. You know, we were very presumptuous as a team. Was it because of that whole, I, I hear, you see a lot of people talking about deep state this, deep state that, and you were at your like people took things for granted. Absolutely, right? absolutely. I've said, you know, that this book is an eternal expression of my deep disappointment. Mm. Yeah, I've said that this, this book is, is an eternal expression of my deep disappointment, you know, in the casual manner that we treated, you know, the whole affair. It was, it was very, we, we had a lot of, uh, you know, assumptions and presumptions, as I've already said. And we took, you know, things like that, so-called deep state, yeah. you know, system. Those things actually don't exist unless you really have control of them. So what is it? Did, did, they, did these guys outmuscle you? Did they outthink you? Did they outwit you guys? What happened? They outdid us, they outplayed us. And they, they, you know, the only thing they didn't do is to beat us on the ballot. But uh, everything else, uh, they did. Uh, 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 <laughs> Absolutely, I'm telling you. Well, I got Baba Shalim in his office. is just down the road. <laughs> <laughs> and this is a business. Eh? <laughs> Let me tell you, yeah. the only thing they didn't do was beat us uh, on the ballot. 200,000 votes, you say, about. Uh, Jeff, you're, 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 you live in this country. Uh, Nick, uh, you're not a stranger in Jerusalem. <laughs> 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 and I can tell you, go around this country. Go around, just do your own, you know, like, census or assessment. Mm -hmm. And out of ten people, only two will tell you they voted for the current president. Majority of Kenyans will still ask you, who voted for these people? So I think you think so that Venezuelans so actually exist, right? Absolutely. I mean, they were arrested by DCI and, and released. Uh, give, yeah. me, give me the two, two people's names of the Venezuelans. Are they in the book? <laughs> Come on, go. I have, I have talked about foreigners, you know, you know, foreign nationals who came to the country with uh, sensitive electro, election materials, you know, and then on, you know, the Camargos of this world, 
uh, you know, and, and his colleagues, you know, they're known. They're Wait. not, they're not uh, fictional characters. They're so not you, ins fictional. you insist that they rigged it? You, you, you really want us to believe that? Yes, absolutely. I, I personally believe it was rigged, the election was rigged. But you see, Jeff. But, you know, but what do you believe and facts? No, no, they're facts. Let, let me tell you. Let me tell you. I was, I was on the front seat, front, front and center. Mm -hmm. You know, in the entire, um, you know, uh, saga, uh, if I was, if I'm to call it that, I was front and center at the preparation. I was front and center at Bomas. And I will tell you, you know, elections are supposed to be a very transparent affair. But when you see a whole commission, you know, and the chairman of a commission refusing to accept results for two consecutive days. You know, the, the, the constitution of Kenya, and these are some of the things, you know, even as Azimio, we don't have very, sometimes we lack the clarity of expression in the top, at the top. And I'm not talking about Baba. I'm talking about some of the people who express these views at the top. Mm. You see, the constitution requires that an election be transparent. It also requires that an election be, you know, be expedited. There should not be unnecessary delay so when you don't receive results for two consecutive, consecutive days without explaining why, that alone raises serious questions. And of course then we have the, you know, what went down up to the end, which is described in the book, you know, the, the chairman of the commission changing rules midway without explanation. You know, we have a chairman of a commission, you know, uh, you know misrepresenting facts. But which are these facts? Because according to him, he said there are other people, the, the, the four, who are trying to... Because he said, oh, the results are opaque, but the, it was based on no facts. And you went to court. Mm. Mm? All the way. Yes, Supreme all the way up to the Supreme. And even had a whole counter full of evidence and in quotes. But there was nothing. And the judge said, this is hot air. Mm. So where, 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 where are yours coming from? Because those two days were justified by him saying there are places that we have to get verification because they're really far. So bringing the results. But we interviewed someone here from IABC who said yeah. each and every ballot paper is accounted for. Each and every ballot paper, is each and every that, those forms. So there's no room for anyone to manipulate. And then he said everyone can take their calculator, sit down and add themselves. So there's no, when you can say, Open the server, open. there's no server to be open because everything was laid out in the open. When this happened, you know, all this happened, I expected that as, is, as, as a mayor we would do a post-mortem. You know, I expected that we would do a, a debrief, you know, as a team. Because there were so many things even on our side that, you know, did not, did not go uh, too well. So I, I, I waited and um, I even tried to initiate, you know, with uh, the, uh, the leadership that could we have, um, you know, a debriefing s a session with the, pe the persons who are involved. You know, I finished writing this book way back in Feb. Hmm. I, could have, I could have released it in Feb. But I held on because Baba was still at that time in the thick of things with the Mandamano and so on, which to me was really just the only way that this matter could be uh, resolved. You know, I was in full support of his call for mass action. And, and so I decided I will not release the book uh, as long as Baba still has, you know, the momentum in terms of um, what he needs to do. But when he now decided to call for bipartisan talks, which to me are not going anywhere, and I'll tell you this on this show mm. while it's still hot, the bipartisan talks are dead in the water. They are dead on arrival. Dead on arrival. <laughs> they are a, a stillbirth. Mm. And uh, the bipartisan talks are actually William Ruto's uh, very clever red herring to Raila Odinga. And, and you know, I've, I've described William Ruto in this book because I, I happen to also... I know a little bit about him. I, I have been, uh, you know, a friend of his, you know, we have worked with him. And so I know a thing or two about him and how he thinks. Mm. And, and so he is yet, yet again, you know, uh, pulling a fast one on Raila Odinga and the Azimio team by giving them something to chase, you know. And, and the reason he is giving them the bipartisan talks is because at the time, you know, Raila Odinga was gaining traction with the mass action. And uh, it was just a matter of time until you know, his, you know, his hand, the president's hand was forced. And so he saw it. And so he threw something you know, for them to, to run after, which, is, which they're calling bipartisan talks. Uh, and of course now Raila Odinga will have to, to, gain, to gain momentum, he'll have to now go back to the drawing board. So when I saw that uh, you know, the whole thing is basically you know, dead on arrival, I decided it's time now to release the book. Yeah. And look, when you say um, these talks are going nowhere, so what happens next? Back to the streets, back to Monday morning? <coughs> You know, I don't know what happens next, but uh, to me, the conversation must continue. Uh, the conversation is a conversation on the state of our nation. We need an, a nation that is uh, 
uh, you know, working, that is a going concern. You know, Kenyans are suffering while we are making all this noise. Mm. We need to find a working formula to ensure that this country is put back on track. And, and, and to me, what the way to do that is first to open up the matter for, you know, if it is an issue of, uh, if Raila Odinga and, and, and the team have brought out the issues that they are bringing out, if it is opening the servers, open the servers so that we can move forward. Yeah. yeah if it is an issue of uh, debate, because, you know, Raila Odinga does, does not, you know, he is he, not an MCA candidate. Eh? He is a presidential candidate. And even if you say he did not win, he commands at least, at the very least, the support of half of this country. Mm -hmm. And he speaks for, I would say, 70% of Kenyans. I would tell you that. Raila Odinga speaks for 70% of Kenyans. So when you ignore Raila Odinga, you're ignoring 70% of this country. So engage Raila Odinga, listen to him, listen to his issues in good faith. Do not, you know, uh, you know Raila, uh, William Ruto is a master of politics mm -hmm. and a master of public perceptions. And he, he knows how to control the public narrative. But this is not time now to play politics, even at that level. I have said in the book, when it comes to the economy, mm. uh, you know, Ruto's government will play politics with mm. the economy. Mm. You know, they will be very uh, political with the economy and uneconomical with politics. Mm. That's what uh, you know. That's how I've described it in the book. And you will never see anything that William Ruto does that is not political. I know he's a, he's a president, but uh, uh, <laughs> Mike Kibaki was also a president. But he, when it was an, the economy, he dealt with the economy. You don't have to. You can't mix these things. You can't get it right. It's like fuel and water. You know, the economy operates on, on different principles from politics, you know, and you need very sound policies on issues of the, of the economy. So when you bring Chipunga, just so that you can, you can quell uh, a certain political debate, what is the sustainable solution? Yeah. They, they are not telling us that, you know, and what, what are the factors that will ensure that the, the, you know, the cost of living as a whole is taken care of once and for all? I mean, you go out of this country, you'll, you'll realize, you know, in even vi very vibrant economies, life is cheaper than in Kenya. And he here, people don't have jobs. People are, uh, you, know, uh, you know, practically eking out an existence. But the cost of basic items is, you know, through, through the roof. It's ridiculous. Yeah. yeah? Tell me something, uh, Saito, about you said you know these uh, two principles very well. Yes. And remember, they used to be together once upon a time in a uh, configuration called the Pentagon. Right. Remember? Yeah. Best of mm. friends, allies, mm. you mm. name it. Mm. And now they can't stand each other. Mm. So what is it? Is it Muslim Kata in the end, or what will it be? Uh, I don't know about Muslim Kata, but um, leaders have to find a way to work together, uh, Jeff. Leaders have to find a way to work together because there is no enmity in politics. It's a competition, just like any other competition. Mm. Uh, there will be winners, there will be losers. But we need to ensure that the losers do not come out feeling that they were shortchanged, you know, and the winners should not win unfairly, right? Yeah. And, and, and uh, you know, in, in terms of what will happen, eventually, uh, I think this country needs to get to a place where uh, we, we always go for the middle ground in terms of national issues. Mm. Let's not take very hard um, positions in, in, ter in, you know, insofar as this country, you know, matters affecting the country are concerned. Let, because all of us are Kenyans, we have nowhere else to go, we don't have an, uh, a backup country. You know, just like Azimio did not have a backup, uh, you know, telling center, we don't have a backup Kenya or a default Kenya that if we finish this one, we can go to another one. At least most of us don't. So let us always put the country's interests first. It doesn't matter. You, if you don't like Raila Odinga, uh, you don't have to like him. If you don't like Saitabao, like Ancholi or Jeff or Nick, you don't have to like us. Mm -hmm. But Kenya is, 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 you know, belongs to all of us. And let us put it first. Then everything else will become easier to handle. Bob has been in this game for what? as long as many of us can remember absolutely as long as many of us mm. is it time he retired not retired i would say retired is uh, you know you don't retire you know baba is uh, is a politician so you don't retire from being yourself <laughs> so baba is a politician baba is is you know is 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 who he is because of the roles he plays it's like saying jeff should retire from talking very good english <laughs> in a very powerful way you can't do that right <laughs> so baba can't retire but there's a difference between retiring and you know and the roles that you play just like today you can retire from active uh, presentation or media and all this or you know uh, but you may not retire from the, you know the the essence of what makes you mm. so i've said in the book that for me you know baba needs to now start thinking in the interest of the country not because of anything else uh, of you know the 2027 and the succession politics 
Because it's important. That's a very important discussion. Seven months later, mm. shouldn't we move on, Said Abash? <laughs> so is it time to move on? Because, you know, no one's going to win at the end of this one. Huh? You know. And like you said, Ruto is a very smart chap. Like that bipartisan has said, everything will be discussed in Parliament. I mean, Just so what, I, what, what is uh, Azimio going to do? What is moving on? Uh, you know, I, the last chapter of the book is actually titled Moving On. Mm -hmm. It's just that, it's just, you know, the description of moving on is what we need to look into. You know, because moving on should not be forgetting about the truth. Moving on should be actually interrogating the truth. You know, right. moving, on, moving on should be about looking at the issues and resolving them. You know, moving on should be about looking at, you know, how do we to move this country forward? You don't move on by, by sweeping things under the carpet. You know, that's not moving on. That is, uh, you know, uh, escape, you know uh, escapism. You don't sweep uh, that under the carpet because it will still be there when you come back. Mm. So moving on means, okay, so here this is where we are. What happened? Can we resolve it once and for all? Can we, you know, take this country to the next level for the benefit of everybody? And, um, yeah, so yes, we need to move on, but we need to understand where and how we are moving on. Tell us, mm. behind the scenes, where do people drop the ball? Because everyone is aware that there's a bit of disorganization mm. in the Azimio side. So mm. who is the first guy to drop the ball? Because I don't see his, all, all his cronies with him nowadays when he goes for, uh, what do you call it, Mandamanos? Mm. It's just him. A lot of them have abandoned him, huh? Yeah, Kalonzo there really speak much. Martha yeah. Karua, mm. like in a Jeanette. Jeanette uh, what's the other one who is on the Instagram middle dress as well, from Mombasa? <laughs> <laughs> Sultan. <laughs> Sultan. Uh, they are not there. Uh, Baba as an, insti as an institution, you know, needs to have, uh, I would say he's an institution. But his systems, his systems are the ones that sometimes fail him. Sometimes I'm all the time. Okay, let me just... It's the Institute it. of Votes Rejection. <laughs> Five <laughs> times. <laughs> so, 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 if I was to put it bluntly, uh, um, I would say Baba is an institution without systems. That is the unfortunate. Is it still an institution? Yeah. He, he, he is an institution. Uh, he is an institution. Just like you, are, you, 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 are, you have a body, but uh, you know, if your systems are not failing, I mean, are failing, you will still be a body, but you're, you know, without systems. So it is those systems that Baba needs to now think about closely, not just for winning an election, but ensure that you have systems in place. So, Mandamano comes back, and then what? People's yeah. yeah. properties destroyed, and then they're told, so, uh, lives, lives lost. Lives <laughs> lost. Uh, then what happens? They'll still tell him, okay, you want to talk about this? This is the, and they, and they keep on saying, we will stick by the Constitution. So, what happens? How is it going to, you know, circumnavigate that? You know, on the issue of Mandamanos, uh, you know, there's one basic truth. And this is something that I think we can agree on. Mm. You know, mandamanos in Kenya are always peaceful until the police come in. Until the police come in. So you wonder, you know, for a government that is saying that they, they should be peaceful, why do they bring in the police? Mm. You know, you saw Baba uh, doing a tour of Kawangware the other day. You know, you know, people dancing and people, you know, coming out, yes, with the uh, sufriyas and making, you know, a, a lot of uh, interesting noises, but peacefully. The only time that that demonstration of um, Mandamano got a bit messy is when the police came in and, without any provocation, started throwing tear you know throwing tear gas and they started you know water cannoning the protest the protesters. You know, Kenyans need to know, and this is something that I don't know what needs to be drilled into the minds of these people in government. The right to demonstrate is a constitutional right. You cannot take it away from us. Sure. You, any attempt to do that is despotism. It is dictatorship. It is an abrogation of the same constitution that you swore to uphold. Deputy President regarding Ashawa, a.k.a. Ricky G, mm. has insisted that... Honest man. <laughs> Honest man, yes. The son of a Mau Mau. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> he insists that uh, Baba has to recognize uh, President Ruto as the president. He has to, if these talks are to move forward. And Baba insists he would recognize him. So, uh, you know, it's a standoff. Rigiji needs to recognize Baba as the greatest Kenyan alive today. Besides, he needs to recognize Baba as the greatest Kenyan alive today. The greatest to recognize. Kenyan is Jeff Koinange. <laughs> <laughs> so, let, let me ask you if you bumped into Baba Shalin, let's refer to him as Baba Shalin for now, mm. would you call him President William Ruto or will call him William or will call him Ruto or my WSR? No. What, what do you refer to him? He, he is the president. I have I, I, I described him like as President <laughs> William Ruto. He is the president. Mm. So, you accept he is the president? He is the president. So I, I, I do not I do not ascribe to 
Uh, uh, you know, I do not ascribe to anything that makes no sense. Mm. I am a logical being. Yeah. I, I mean, God gave me very good brains. I have to use them. It is the biggest organ in my body. What about the institution? You know? why, why is it referring to it? <laughs> I mean, if you're, you're using intelligence, <laughs> or, or why don't you drum that up uh, institutions head also? Uh, well, you, you see, I've answered your question. You know, William Ruto is the president. It, it, you know, in terms of legitimacy, legitimacy is a different matter. But legality, he's the legal president. I've talked about all those things in the book. This book... You know, this book, there is a great, there is a philosophy that is behind this book, and I know you you will read it. It has it is getting uh, you know all manner of reviews, most uh, very positive. Mm -hmm. But I want to say first, you know, uh, to the readers of this book, you know, uh, I want to challenge them. Anybody who reads this book once, you know, bring it back to me. I'll give you back your money. I know everybody will read this book at least twice or three times, and they will not discard it even after they've read it. Mm -hmm. And if, you, if you've read it and you no longer want it, bring it back. I'll give you at least 50% of your money back. I'm <laughs> Guaranteed. Serious. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. Money back guarantee. <laughs> <laughs> but by your number, it's not yes. How does someone find you? <laughs> the website, where, where the website, the website, the website is there. The there. website is there. <laughs> and, uh, go, just go to www.kanchori.online. Send you and say, I want to return your book. Uh, you know, I've read it. I don't like it. By the way, where is it available? Well, it's available um, in uh, different bookshops. It is available at Nuria. It's available at Ayaya, uh, the bookstop. You know, the bookstop, bookstop. at Ayaya. Absolutely. You, uh, it's av available at Village Market, uh, Half Price uh, Bookshop. It is available um, in many. Of what I've done with this book, I wanted to also, you know, support young, up and coming, you know, bookshops, and uh, you know, especially those that are being run by youth. So we have a lot of online, small online bookshops. You know, we have Bookmania. We have uh, Kibanga, we have, um, we have so many of them that uh, you know, you know, are very interested in this book. So I'm, I'm, I'm basically working with them to support them to grow, you know, even for the interest of the youth, because they are the ones who understand you know, you know, how to order books online and all, and mm. all this. But also it is available uh, in Amazon, both as uh, e-book and, and paperback. Mm. Uh, it is available in more than 50 online stores worldwide. So, people so the book has gone world. Oh. Absolutely. The book has, has already gone global. Tom Sandler, when's the last time you spoke to Baba? The last time I spoke to Baba was, um, I think, a month ago. Um, yes. So, I had told him about the book in December last year. Mm. You know, and you know, you know Baba, is a, Baba is an open-minded person. And he also knows, he knows me, he knows my heart. And, um, uh, so at the time, he, he just laughed and said, okay, okay, you're writing, okay, okay, okay. You know, he, Baba will never tell you yes or no, by the way. Baba is an interesting guy. You know, he, he, he's, he's that explains <laughs> why he doesn't accept people as president. <laughs> there's no yes or no. Yeah. There's no yes or no, you yeah. know, so. There, there's, another, there's another personal assistant who wrote a book a while back. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Carole Mundo. No, <laughs> Peeling Back the Mask. Ooh, <laughs> the man with the same name. Twice. <laughs> <laughs> miguna, miguna. What is a book? A book is a collection of words put together to form a story. Yeah. And it's been quiet. Uh, it's been very quiet. Have you put his mind on what he feels about Baba the Fifth? So well, you should have heard us one chapter. Uh, we, we shall know. I, although he has already commented uh, about it, he has welcomed it. Um, you know, uh, you know he's, a, he's a scholar at the end of the day. Mm. Uh, with... Uh, bit of bile here and there, but uh, <laughs> he's an intelligent man. So really yeah. intelligent. <laughs> You're like a mosquito, you bite, then you blow. <laughs> you said he's got bile, <laughs> and then you work and he's intelligent. <laughs> so but it's just facts. <laughs> you know, facts have to be presented in a pleasant manner. You know, yeah. facts can be very rough, eh? Uh -huh. So if you just say them like this, you can be, you know, it can feel like, like a punch. Yeah. So, and, and that's what this book does, by the way. This book, you know, presents very difficult things in a very satirical manner. So you will laugh even when you don't want to laugh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some, some things will, will be so difficult, you know, that if they are just saying, you know, say it plainly, you would cry. But because of how, you know, I've navigated around, you know, the issues with, you know, with satire and a bit of caricature, you, you find yourself laughing, you know, more, more often than not. I don't want you to speak on behalf of Baba, mm. but do you think you'll run again in 27? You want me to just be plain? Yes. I think he'll run again. Should he? I don't think so. But he will run again. Have, have you told him that? That he should? Yeah, yes, I've said in the book. What did he say? Uh, but he said he didn't say yes or no. Uh, <laughs> Baba, Baba will not say yes or no. I, 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 I will try. Up, up to 2027, <laughs> ju, uh, 2027 May. No. In May of 2027, no. Baba will still be keeping people guessing. But he, he most likely will be on the ballot. But, um, well, I think we need to have a discussion on, on that. For those of us who love Baba, really, we need to uh, get him to look at the whole matter a bit differently this time.
All right. Before you leave, just tell me what does Saitabao stand for? <laughs> <laughs> so Saitabao is a Maasai name, mm. uh, which means the person who delivers. This is, oh. yes, Saitabao means the person who does not leave anything yeah. hanging. Ah. You know, so if you're given an assignment, mm. you take it to its logical conclusion. So you've yes. delivered? I've delivered. I've delivered. And um, I had said I was going to deliver Baba to State House. Mm. I promised him. Mm. I said my name, I told him uh, in Suswa actually, I told him my name, this is what my name means. I know you may not have known, but it means the person who delivers. And, um, and, and I assured him that I will deliver him to State House. But I couldn't do it alone. And that's what uh, the book also says. Yeah. I couldn't do it alone. Because of that Tower of Babel that uh, <laughs> occupied the, the king. Yeah. And they lied to him. Let's just make this about they lied to him. Absolutely. Some of them deliberately, others ignorantly. But when did you realize this? After or during? Before. Oh, before. before? Before. You knew? Yes. And I told Baba as much. And what did he say? Uh, you know, uh, uh, we have deep states. Uh, no, 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 no. Baba you never talks. What you mean? What you mean? No, no. You know, so Bab Baba would listen, uh, but he had a lot of faith in some of these people, so he couldn't really see how that uh, things would go awry. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, all the best. I mean, everybody should, uh, should, should give it a shot if they can. I mean, we should have actually a million people on the ballot in 2027. Mm -hmm. they're, they're all entitled. Everyone. Everyone. I think that's a mini insult. No, it's not. 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 It's